Hi, my name is Benny and I have to make a confession. I am game development addicted. This video is my personal view, not a scientific one, and I would really love to read from your experiences. Well, if you call yourself an indie game developer or game designer, you probably already know what I'm talking about. But furthermore, I think we all are game designers. Do you remember how easy it was as a child to find some great ideas to play around? Every heap of dirt was inviting me to play. I remember playing pirates in our garden or playing with Barbies or Lego, and on the fly, without even thinking about it, you were creating your own rule sets. In fact, I think we could learn a lot from childs and their natural playing behavior as game designers. But even when being older and playing video games, who never thought things like, oh man, I would love them to include this feature in this game, or you want to play a hero in games like League of Legends in a special way which is not possible by design? You as a designer would have removed that cooldown reduction cap on Teemo to make it possible to spawn a mushroom every second? I think that's one of the reasons why so many people became addicted to game designing or game development. It's a natural, wonderful creative progress and it's such a great feeling to create something and bring it to life. And especially how cool is it to see other people entering your world and perhaps finding new ways to play your game you never even thought about. One of my best moments was when people created new names for heroes or items I made, like my hunter Arboros being called Airbrush, or my misunderstood art skills made them call a magic stone I painted the Cloud. Don't know why. But even if you already started developing computer games, do you know this amazing feeling when you have a great idea for a game? This world builds up in your head and there's this unbelievable freedom and fun in your imagination. How to interact with it and how cool it would be if you implement this and that feature. Imagining your friends playing it and discovering things you have hidden for them. Then you started coding and it feels great to move your 2D paint character around a green area. And then you make him collect a coin. You are God. You created this world and there was light. And shadow. Do you remember pre-release of No Man's Sky? What an unbelievable idea to visit so many individual planets with their own biomes and creatures. Until you saw three of them and it became boring. What do you think? Would it be worth traveling to Mars for a month? In real life? Would you be excited? What would you think? How long will it last when you reached Mars and are living in this desert? The promising joy of our fantasy can be addictive and reality can never make it up. Everywhere it's the same. It can be your new dream car you worked so long for and spent a lot of money on, which loses excitement after some days. We know it as gamers with promising games, which just seem not to be as much fun as we imagined, and we know it as game designers, and this hurts a lot. Sometimes you spend months or even years on a project, which just in the end is not fun. Or it isn't fun anymore because you played it a hundred times during testing and perhaps other people would still enjoy it. Of course, you can somehow avoid many mistakes. That's why we build prototypes and let people test our games. Check if the core loop is fun and much more, like sharing our content with an online community to get feedback. Which I was always too afraid of and which I'm trying now. But let's be honest, indie game development can be frustrating. But why do we continue? Let's get back to the addiction. In the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, they differentiate four categories concerning addictions and one aspect is tolerance, which means you need more of a substance to get the same effect. Do you remember your first dopamine kick as you read the magic words Hello World on the screen? When learning coding, these are in most cases the first things to learn. For me it was in school, although my first game projects were made with the RPG Maker much earlier. I still remember the story of a game my cousin made when we were childs. And developing was fun. You wanted more and you got more than Hello World printing on the screen. Your character was moving, first enemies were destroyed, you felt great. But the game you made kind of sucked. Cause there are of course thousands of better games already out there and you couldn't finish your Minecraft clone in one week. Okay, you had a new idea, a new game. You learned from your mistakes and you learned new skills. Now you perhaps got multiplayer running. Technology is improving and it was never as easy as today to make games. So you get your next dopamine kick as you test your game with a friend on two different computers and you manage to do what you always dreamed of, but your game still sucks. You need more of your imagination drug because reality always comes back for you. I'm exaggerating here with the DSM and addictions, but there are some parallels for some game designers. Another example is impaired control, there it says, Wanting to cut down or stop using but not being able to. 
How often did I sit there till late at night knowing I had to sleep, but I wanted to finish this one last task. Or what about neglecting responsibilities in relationships, giving up activities? I had a lot of those days where I thought, nah, I prefer working on my game. It's more interesting or important than meeting some friends or doing sports. And I continued despite those known problems. Although I would still say that game dev sometimes is more interesting and even healthier than some conversation with some friends. In case you work self-employed, it's sometimes difficult to organize when to work and when to meet friends to find the right balance. Cause my friends all work at different times. I'm developing games for over 20 years now and on a career level I cannot call myself successful. And I read posts and forums about people trying to manage their life, getting up at 4 o'clock to work on their game, go to work, organize family sports. Or I remember YouTube videos from devs explaining how they reorganized their lives because they weren't doing sports anymore, didn't find the time for friends and they talked over their depressions, which I could do too. It is a challenging work, hobby, tasks, Especially today, most of us dream of making our living with something, with something, with something. I'm sorry for my really bad TH, I'm always struggling with that. Okay, again. Especially today, most of us dream of making our living with something we love or which promises you a meaningful life. But indie game development needs a lot of work, luck and dedication to be successful. So it even has some kind of gambling addiction for me. Always putting more into it till someday you hopefully get the jackpot. Obviously, I made a lot of mistakes on my game dev journey, although I learned a lot from most of them. Especially, I was always going for two big projects I could never finish. In most cases, totally aware of it. Or using the wrong technology, don't prototype good enough, getting sick because it was overwhelming with all the other projects in my life. But I think my personal biggest mistake was never publishing or even showing my games and finishing them because I was too afraid of what people would say. Don't get me wrong, I love game design. But sometimes I ask myself if I'd have a happier life without it and how much time I potentially wasted on these dreams around my games. And I think that is one of the crucial mistakes many of us do in the beginning, to mistake dreaming for game design. Creativity is so important, but game design is mostly a very analytical process. Furthermore, there is a difference between game design and game development. As an indie working alone, you need to do both. You have an idea, you design the game, you start developing it, you need to redesign because reality is different than what you imagined, you re-implement and so forth. You must love both processes. And in most times I do, so I don't think of game designing as a disease. But I think it has a lot of potential to overdo, make it an unhealthy habit and feeling kind of addicted to it, as you can to sports, sexuality, food, movies or other pleasures giving you this feeling of joy. These are some reasons for this channel. I want to discuss with you the big questions of game design. Nah, but share thoughts and talk with you about some game design problems I'm currently having in my projects, my way to solve them if I found one and discuss your ideas. Sure, I like to promote and improve my projects, but I really enjoy discussing solutions for game design problems with friends. But I don't have any, so I need you. Kidding, but most of my friends right now are dancers and these two worlds seem not to fit together very well. Honestly, game designing as an indie can be lonely. If you have a colleague or friends you can participate with, great. For some time, I enjoyed programming with my cousin with whom I shared an apartment and I really miss motivating each other. So here you are, big world. If two or three of you find my videos, hello, nice to meet you. Drop a hello in the comments if you like and have a look at my upcoming videos about my current game projects. And I'd love if you tell me more about your experiences and love to game design. Are you a developer yourself? Do you feel kind of addicted to it? What are your most enjoyable moments or your worst? Do you want to make a living from it or do you just enjoy the process? Thanks for watching, keep on designing or better not.